So this is section 4.1, which is angles and their measures. We're going to talk about the problem of angular measure, degrees and radians, circular arc length, and angular and linear motion. So the first thing to talk about is the difference in the two types of angle measures that we're going to talk about. So we have 360 degrees represents degrees, so the distance if we have a circle. So if we have a circle, measuring the degrees all the way around the circle is 360. We can also measure in radians. So if we look at the next slide here, so a radian is the distance of the radius. So if you have this distance A and you laid that onto the circle, that would give you an arc length of the same measure and that is what one radian is equal to. So the angle measure where the arc length is equal to the radius. So if we think about a circle, you can fit, this is just like estimate, you can fit one, two, three, and a little bit more um, radians in half a circle, and then four, five, six, and a little bit more, that's kind of seven, but uh, so, what that means is we, it doesn't come out to be perfect. This is a really bad circle. We're going to just erase that. Okay, so um, in a circle, we have, if we were talking about 180 degrees, we have one pi radians in 180 degrees. And all the way around your circle is two pi radians. So pi helps us give a nice round number instead of um, decimals that are not exact. Okay, so when we're converting between degrees and radians, we use the conversion that there's pi radians in 180 degrees. So depending on which way you're converting, you're either going to put the pi radians in the numerator or the denominator um, so that they will cancel. Same thing with the 180 degrees. So we're going to practice this. So how many radians are in 135 degrees? So we set this up with 130 de 135 degrees, and we're going to multiply. So I can tell that I want the degrees to cancel, so that means I need to put degrees on the bottom so that they cancel. So that tells me the 180 goes on the bottom, and the pi radians goes on the top. So the degrees cancel, so this would be 130 5 pi radians over 180, and then we reduce, we simplify if we can, so we get 3 pi over 4 radians. Okay, so that's going from degrees to radians. I'm going to erase this. We're going to go the opposite direction. So if I have 7 pi over 6 radians, Okay, we're going to use that same conversion, but this time I want to cancel the pi radians. So the pi radians goes on the bottom, and the 180 degrees goes on the top. So the pi radians cancel. So then I would have 7 times 180 degrees on the top divided by 6. So we get 1,260 divided by 6, which is 210 degrees. So that's how you do it if you're going from radians to degrees. Okay, and then our last example here is to find the length of the intercepted arc of an arc intercepted by a central angle of one fourth radian in a circle of radius three inches. So remember what we said that a radian measure means that so one radian is equal to one radius. So if we have a radius of three. That means that one radian is also going to be three inches. So if we want to know one fourth of that, we would take one fourth of three inches and we would get three fourths inches. Okay, so arc length formula. So there's two arc length formulas that we're going to look at. Um, this one is if you're using radians. So if theta is the central angle in a circle of radius r and if theta is measured in radians, then we can find the length of an intercepted arc. So again, an arc, 
So here's your angle. So if this is theta, this is r, this would be s, the distance between where your angle intercepts the circle. Okay, we can also look at the arc length formula with degrees, and you can probably figure out where this formula comes from based on the pi, pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. So substituting in what um, for theta what that's going to be equal to. So if theta is a central angle with um, in a circle, and if theta is measured in degrees, then we use pi times the radius times theta divided by 180. Okay, so our next example, we're going to find the perimeter of a pizza slice. So find the perimeter of a 30 degree slice of a large 8 inch radius pizza. Okay, so if we think about what this pizza slice looks like here. Okay, so we know that this angle is 30 degrees. We know that the radius of the pizza is 8. So that means that both of those side lengths are going to be 8. And we need to find the arc length. So we're going to use S equals, we're going to use the formula using degrees because that's what angle measure was given to us. So this would be pi times 8 times 30 divided by 180. And we get approximately 4.2 inches. So that means that this is 4.2. So to find the perimeter, we would add up the 8 plus 8 plus 4.2, so we get 20.2 inches. Okay, the last thing that we're going to talk about is angular and linear motion. So angular speed is measured in units like revolutions per minute. So angular speed, the formula for angular speed, let me write it up here with. So angular speed is theta over t. So it's going to be our angle per time. Linear speed um, is going to be our arc length over time, which we could also say we know that our arc length from our previous um, formulas was the radius times theta. So we could say radius times theta over time, and we could also say the radius times angular speed because we know this is equal to theta over time. Okay, and the last thing is nautical miles. So nautical miles are different than what we statute miles or what normal miles we think of. Um, a nautical mile is the length of one minute of arc along the Earth's equator. So... Um, so one statute mile, so one mile that we know is about 0.87 nautical miles, or we can say one nautical mile is about 1.15 statute miles. Okay, the last thing that I want to talk about really briefly, and um, we will probably go into more of this on a Google Meet, is you're going to see some angles written as degrees, minutes, seconds, like 28 degrees, 15 minutes, 7 seconds, something like that. So this is just another way of writing um, writing an angle. So if we, I can show you at a Google Meet how we would input this into the calculator. Um, but basically, when we're talking about minutes, one minute um, is equal to 1 60th of a degree which we can think of that's because there's 60 minutes in an hour, okay? And then if we talk about seconds, one second is equal to one 3,600th of a degree. So if you were trying to convert these into a decimal, you could take 15 over 60 and 7 over 3,600, and that would convert it for you into um, just using a decimal for the degree. Okay, let me know if there are any questions.